Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mandy, and if you're here with us for the very first time, welcome. Make sure you hit the like and the subscribe button. Today we're gonna to be talking about how I'm managing homeschool and meals, <laughs> basically just taking care of my family um, as a homeschooling parent during a major surgery. So I'm actually standing up right now, which is such a win for me, but I can't stand up for very long. So. You can imagine things are just a little off right now. So I'm gonna show you guys kind of some of the things that I'm doing. So first I do wanna mention though, we have a Facebook group full of almost a thousand moms right now who are just having so much fun. We're having, it's my favorite corner of the internet. I'm gonna put the link down to my Facebook group down below in the description box so you can come and join us and hang out. So, okay. So I'm a little puffy. I'm really swollen right now. So I apologize. My face feels like, I feel like a marshmallow. <laughs> um, but it should go down in a couple of weeks and I should be getting back to my normal everyday life. But for now, things are just off. But I can't totally neglect school for six weeks while I recover on the couch. So. And that also goes for meals. I can't just order takeout for six solid weeks. So what, what is a mom to do? I can't stand for very long, but I did want to record this because I feel like it's important. A lot of parents kind of worry about things like this and they're not sure if they can even homeschool while they're recovering from an illness or from a surgery or if they just need to take some time off. Um, you know, sometimes we have to care for other people. So I do want to make sure that we go over this and you guys can kind of see how I do all of this and put it all together. So something that's been really important is just what I call couch schooling. You guys have heard me talk about this. You guys know I suffer from a chronic illness and I do what's called couch schooling often, especially when I was in the thick of it and I had no medication, I hadn't been diagnosed yet and I was just sick all the time like it felt like I was always sick and a couple times a week I would actually have to do couch schooling couch schooling is this term that I made up that just basically means mommy's on the couch you guys are gonna do school but I'm gonna tell you what to do from the couch <laughs> now I know that with little ones this might not be possible but if you have older more independent kids this is totally possible you can totally do this um, I find that I don't have to really stand over my kids' shoulders anyway at this point in our homeschool, so this is really easy. So basically what I do is I just keep them on task. Because we're already in a routine as far as homeschool goes, they know pretty much what they need to do top to bottom without me even telling them because they've been doing the same routine for like three years solid. So that means I don't really have to go over things other than me having the teacher book on my lap or my lesson plan book, whatever you know you have, and I basically tell them the, the assignment that they're doing. Now, once they have that assignment, they'll go off, they'll go to the kitchen table or to the laptop or to their desks back here, and they will finish that assignment. And when they're done, they'll bring it to me, I'll grade it, and we're done. Super easy. I don't have to do a whole lot and it lets me rest in between. Now, you guys know because you've seen me in my other videos, I do come in and check the kids. You know, I'm here usually directing things, but when I'm recovering from surgery, that just isn't possible. And a lot of times it's just not possible. So we do things, we adjust to our situations because homeschooling gives us that flexibility to have these things happen and we can still educate our children. One of the other things I wanna to mention too, there's so much educational programming out there at our fingertips. One of the things that we've been doing is watching educational documentaries while I've been recovering because I don't sit well. I don't know if you guys have picked up on this or not, but I am a very active person. I work out a lot, I move a lot, I don't sit still. So I constantly need something for my brain or my hands to be doing for me not to lose my mind. So we've been watching a lot of programs on um, the American History Channel and we get that through through Discovery Plus. Oh, I love that channel, you guys. There's so much great history stuff. My kids are big history buffs. 
so is my husband. So there's all kinds of great programming on there for us. And there's always something on what we're learning right now in history. Um, so right now we've been watching a lot of Vietnam, uh, Civil War stuff. We've been watching documentaries on different nations. Um, you guys know we've been doing countries and cultures, like that big map back there. And um, one of the things that we've been watching, my kid's new favorite show is Bizarre Foods with Andrew Zimmern, Zimmern? Zimmerman. Sorry. I know. I know. I know. I'm not up on pop culture. Sue me. But <laughs> Bizarre Foods is a great one if you're doing a geography unit because he's going all out to like all of these different countries and you're learning about the culture through this documentary even though he is eating some weird stuff and if you have a weak stomach don't eat while you're watching this program it's just just trust me but because i have boys and they think that gross things are cool like this is their new favorite show zimmern isn't it i will know this i will i it will come to me and after i hit the button on this camera and i'll be like so Andrew Zimmern, I think is what it's called, <laughs> but they love this show and I wanted to make sure that I told you guys about that. Watch a movie. I mean, when teachers are sick in public school, trust me, we do this all the time. We break out the, we break out the movies like crazy. And trust me, my kids are watching much more educational programming on Discovery Plus with the History Channels than I watched when I was in school and they just needed a day off or they had to catch up. So. Keep that in mind. There's all kinds of things that you can do to keep your kids entertained while you are recovering or you need a day or a week or like me, four weeks to six weeks. Um, however, we're gonna be finishing up our school year here pretty soon and they will actually finish up their school year before I'm fully recovered, which is kind of cool. Um, we already did our interview, end of year testing and now we just have to finish up uh, our school books and we're gonna be done for the year and then they can go into kind of like a couple week break while I finish recovering and then we can start the next school year and I'm gonna be planning out the next school year while I'm on the couch because help me I need something to do which if you have been following me on Instagram my handle is down below it's Amanda underscore malts I have been so bored I have been posting on Instagram so much I apologize if I'm clogging your feed guys but my stories have just been like just stuff that I have been surfing around and finding because I need somebody to talk to and you guys are just my favorite people so so I have um, I have two boys one is um, <laughs> one is 10 is gonna be 11 soon and one just turned 14 and I also have my husband who is home full time because he is retired. So there is a lot of food in my house. <laughs> um, we eat all meals at home unless it's a special occasion. So you can imagine the amount of food we go through. So there's a couple things that I'm doing. So first, I am ordering everything right now on walmart.com and having it delivered via their grocery service. I pay extra for the delivery fees and things like that, but I got that taken care of because I actually got like a yearly subscription or something or a monthly subscription and that has been totally worth it. So if you're wondering about grocery delivery, oh, it's amazing, especially for times like this. So um, I have found there's been a couple things that have really helped with this as far as costs and I'm going to go over that with you guys. So every week I make a menu plan. You guys know I'm huge on meal planning. One of the things that I did was I instead of cooking just meals specifically for my freezer, I doubled up my dinners. So the dinners that I was already cooking for that night all last month I bought a little bit extra and cooked double. One for us, one for my freezer. And I have found that cooking that way and making freezer meals that fashion rather than cooking just specific freezer meals has been so much more affordable. It was so much cheaper to do it this way and I will never do it any other way. If I ever need to fill my freezer again, I'm going to do what I call double cooking. Double cooking has been a life Saver. So if you guys are having an upcoming issue like mine, like I have, I had a huge surgery 
Um, I'm going to be out of commission for several weeks. Double cook. It is a lifesaver. So double cooking has been great. I filled up my freezer with three weeks full of dinners just by double cooking. And I didn't really do that much. And I found that it's actually much more affordable to do it that way because you're only buying a couple extra products for something that you're already making rather than a whole new set of of um, food items for a diff different meal. So next, let's talk about the things that I used. So there's two, two or three big things that I used. First, these disposable pans from Walmart. Um, and you can get these in all different kinds of shapes and sizes. You can get them eight by eights, nine by nines, nine by thirteens. You can get them in like cake size. Um, and not all of them are made equal. Some of them are much more sturdy than others. So use discretion when you get them. If you get the really cheap ones, they're gonna be really flimsy and they're gonna fall apart. I find that if if I get the really flimsy ones, I have to put a baking sheet underneath when I cook it just to make sure that it doesn't warp or change shape or um, things spill out over the top inside of the oven when it's cooking. The other thing that I bought was press and seal wrap. This Glade press and seal wrap. I love this stuff. However, make sure that you take this off before you put it in the oven, and yes, I have done that. I have actually put it in the oven and forgot that I have plastic wrap on the top, and it was one of those like, duh, mom kind of moments, but this stuff is fantastic. So after I make the meal and I put it in one of these pans, I put the press and seal wrap over it. I find it covers it in, uh, it actually covers the meal and seals it really well. Then I'll put foil on the top. So I'll put an extra layer of foil on the top before it goes in my deep freeze. And then I take out a permanent marker and I write on the actual um, foil what is inside and the date that I made that meal. So every night when I make dinner, the thing that I have been doing is I've been pulling out some kind of side dish, a main dish, and then I find some kind of vegetable or um, sometimes I'll even make bread with it, depending on what it is. It just depends on what it is. Uh, Pre-made salads are great. Um, the vegetables that you just have to throw into the microwave are fantastic. Um, I love those steamable ones. I'm gonna, I will show you how I do this in um, a later part of the video so you guys can see like a real time uh, version of one of our meals. So it's been great. I haven't had to do anything and my kids take care of the dishes and it's been glorious. And it's made recovery so much easier for me. Hey guys, so I'm about five days post-surgery and I've been getting a lot of questions on Instagram and social media and my group about how I'm dealing with dinner because I have two almost teenage boys and a husband and they don't really know how to cook. <laughs> so I've been preparing for weeks and I'm going to show you guys just kind of how I've been um, preparing dinner to where I don't have to really do anything at all besides pull out some stuff, throw it in the oven, and it's done. So this is my freezer, and all of these right now are the meals that we're gonna eat throughout the week, and some of these will actually feed my family more than once. So you can see that some of these trays are bigger than others, and yes, my freezer is totally unorganized. I, I totally know that, but, um, you know, surgery problems, so. Um, Basically what we're going to be doing is pulling out things and using them as we go. So I'll show you guys what we're eating tonight. So tonight is actually super simple. So these are uh, copycat Outback Steakhouse chicken breasts and it's, I think it's called Alice Springs chicken and it's like, it's chicken that's been marinated that has bacon and cheese and mushrooms and all kinds of good stuff in it. And then we're having um, the second half, we had this once already this week as you can tell. We're having the second half of the copycat cracker barrel hash brown casserole. And then I'm for vegetables, I'm either, because I can't do a whole lot of fresh stuff right now, which is what I normally do. So I'm doing a lot of these like steamable bags and I'm just kind of warming them up or canned vegetables. I like the, I like the frozen better than the, than the canned because the canned always kind of has that metal taste to it but I'm using these and just doing something simple with it because I can't be on my feet for that long. 
And then one of my very dear friends, she brought over um, some bread from one of the fr uh, stores that we have that bakes everything fresh in the bakery. So we're probably gonna be finishing this off as well. So remember I have teenage boys, so they eat a lot and my husband works out and he eats a lot. So dinner is not something that I can skip on or do very lightly. So we have to make sure that we have enough to feed everybody. Anyway, I'm rambling, so I am probably gonna just wrap this up now. I hope that these tips help you if you need to take a break or take a breather, even do like a half time at school, just take like half days. This is a great way to do half days. So I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Happy homeschooling.